Good morning everyone. I am very much honored to be here with you this morning to talk about mental health and psychosocial support. Before we begin, I'd like to give you the outline of my presentation. We'll talk about COVID situation there, the current situation of COVID in terms of statistics, the total number of cases, the deaths, and number of recovery. And I'll also briefly discuss the waves of pandemic. And after that, we'll talk about effects of pandemic to mental health, especially the effects among adolescents. And we'll focus on the three things that contribute to the mental health concerns of our students. And we'll also discuss the common reactions to COVID-19 pandemic. We'll also have a discussion on promoting psychosocial well-being for the students as well as the parents. To begin, I have here a simple breathing meditation exercise which I'd like you to practice. Mindful breathing. Close your eyes and rest your hands on your knees. Bring your attention to the touch of your body on your seat. Feel the weight of your body on your chair or cushion. Make sure that your back is straight and that you're comfortable. Take a few deep breaths. While you're breathing deeply, relax your shoulders, your stomach muscles, the muscles in your face, your hands, and your legs. Let go of all the tightness in your body. Now bring your attention back to your breath. Notice what it feels like as it enters through your nose, goes down through your throat, filling your lungs, and back out through your nose. Notice your stomach and chest rise and fall each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. And just allow your breathing to be natural and relaxed. Now bring your attention to the feeling of your breath in your nose. Feel your breath as it comes in and goes out. Just focus on this sensation, paying attention to each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. As you inhale, maybe your breath feels cool. And as you exhale, maybe it feels a little warmer. When your mind wanders, or if you become distracted, just notice what's going on in your head and then gently bring your attention back to your breath going in and out. Focus on the feeling of your breath and allow thoughts and feelings to come and go in the background. Now gently bring your attention Back to the touch of your body on your seat and open your eyes. All right, so how did you feel about the activity? Could it help you to regain your sense of calm? A lot of schools nowadays is practicing meditation before they start their classes, and significant amount of research have found out that practicing meditation daily improves or increases attention span of learners. This is what I want to achieve this morning to help you focus on our discussion. Alright, um, as we go along, I'd like to ask you, Kumusta na nga ba kayo ngayong may pandemia? Ano-ano ang mga naging epekto sa iyo ng pandemia bilang mga magulang? At 
Paano po kayo nag adjust sa new normal na ito? So, maaaring iba-iba po ang ating mga sagot dito sa mga tanong na ito. Pero gusto ko lang pong malaman kung ano na nga po ba ang current situation ninyo bilang mga magulang. At paano naka-apekto itong pandemya sa inyo. Alright, so marami sa ating mga magulang ay uh, nagsasabing okay sila at marami naman nagsasabi na stress and uh, marami ang nagsasabi din na nagkaroon sila ng mas maraming oras para sa kanilang pamilya. So iba-iba po yung naging epekto sa atin ng pandemyang ito. But let's go back. Ano na nga po ba ang katayuan ng ating bansa about COVID-19? No? As of September 10, there were 3,821 additional confirmed cases, which brings the total active COVID cases up to 58,823. So the total recovery is 186,058. Those who have died have reached 4,066. Alright, so let's go back from the beginning. Saan nga ba nag-start itong pandemia? It was in December 8 when was the first patient developed symptoms of Wuhan coronavirus. And in December 31, China alerted WHO about several pneumonia cases. And then, it was January 7 when the new virus was identified. January 13, first case outside China was reported in Thailand. And January 29, death toll climbs to 132. Then 6,000 new additional cases were reported. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, in January 30, 2020, first COVID cases was confirmed. January 31, President Duterte orders a ban on travelers from the Chinese province of Hubei. And then February 1, 2020, the Philippines records its first COVID-19 death. And yung death na ito, yung case na ito is related to our first COVID case. And then February 5, 2020, DOH announced the third COVID-19 case. Fast forward, in the first weeks of March, there were additional several cases. And then in March 14, nagkaroon ng implementation ng ECQ, which led us to stringent quarantine protocols such as physical distancing, stay at home, travel ban, uh, cancellation of face-to-face -face classes, no mass gathering of more than 10 people, and restricted religious celebration. Parents, itong COVID-19 pandemic isn't just a health crisis. Um, it is also an economic and mental health crisis as well. No, Meron nga po tayong tinatawag na tatlong waves ng pandemia. Of course, yung uh, first wave would be the health crisis, yung COVID-19, which is the reason of our economic crisis and mental health crisis. So dahil nga sa mga stringent quarantine protocols, stay-at-home orders, many business have resulted to closures. And then marami ang naapektuhan, marami ang naging unemployed, wala ng trabaho, kulang yung source of income, etc., etc. That's why ngayon tayo ay nasa wave 3 ng ating pandemia, which is the mental health crisis. Okay? So, ito po yung naging epekto sa atin ng uh, uh, COVID-19 at ng economic crisis. And actually, even before the pandemic happens, our country was already suffering from mental health crisis. Pero itong pandemia, mas pinalala niya yung crisis natin on mental health. And then, ano nga ba yung epekto ng pandemia sa ating mental health? The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting economic recession have negatively affected many people's mental health and created new barriers for people already suffering from mental illness and substance use disorders. While we experience mental health concerns, pero yung mental health concerns of those people who were already suffering from mental health concerns ay mas lumala pa 
and it created new barriers. Uh, say for example, uh, don't know if you are familiar with retired Army Ragos. During the early months of lockdown, no, he was suffering from schizophrenia. And for someone who is suffering from schizophrenia, uh, ang hirap nga na magstay at home. He actually regularly attends his psychiatric consultation, pero itong lockdown prevented him to regularly see his psychiatrist and uh, to continue his medication. So, ang daming trigger sa kanya during pandemic. And we would only see a person who violate quarantine protocols. No, Pero for someone who is having mental health concerns, it's more than that. And also, uh, itong pandemia ay uh, naging mahirap din para sa mga taong may substance use disorders, especially those who are addicted to alcohol. Since alcohol is already part of their system, ang hirap na alisin yun um, agad-agad. That's why nung nagkaroon tayo ng alcohol ban, we heard from the news na merong mga tao na nag-violate, na nakikipag-inuman pa rin. Kasi nga, ang hirap sa kanilang alisin sa sistema nila yon. And sometimes they experience withdrawal. Uh, nanginginig na sila, no? shaking yung kanilang katawan dahil hindi sila makapag-intake ng substance to which they are addicted to. So because of the pandemic, the lockdown, the economic recession, and everything that has been going on, we experience extreme emotions such as anger, frustration, sadness, and uh, anxiety. And then because of the stay at home and uh, physical distancing orders, many are isolated and are feeling physically and socially distant from their loved ones. No, pwedeng hindi tayo for example makauwi ng province, mga parents yung uh, maari yung mga magulang natin na sa province pero wala tayo magawa, hindi tayo makauwi dahil sa travel ban, di ba? Or yung mga non-essential travel or pwedeng mag-travel pero ngayon ang hassle because ang daming hinihinging documents. And then people who test positive for COVID experience stigma and discrimination which adds to their stressors, mental stressors per se. And then uh, narinig natin sa mga balita rin na may mga frontliners or mga COVID positive cases ang mga sinaktan, physically attacked no, by bystanders or for example, yung nagpark lang ng ambulance, pinugbog kasi pinaghihinalaan na yung ambulance ay uh, merong uh, ginamit for ano, no, ginamit ng taong may COVID. So dahil dyan, uh, lahat tayo na i-stress, even yung inyong mga anak. Pero actually, stress is a normal response to a physical or emotional challenge. And it occurs when demands are out of balance with resources for coping. Okay, so parents, we have to remember that stress is normal. Okay? Kung nari, nag-away kayo ng mister or ni misis, o pwedeng stressors natin yan. Pero minsan, itong mga away na ito, ay uh, we easily get over these things. Pero pag nag-prolong yung away na ito, uh, umabot na ng buwan, course, yung emotional challenge mas nagiging malala din and mas nagiging painful din on our end. That's the time na yung stress na yun nagiging chronic na and nagiging critical yung stress. And we uh, need support from our loved ones or even from professionals. Then how would we know that we are experiencing too much stress? Maski sa anak ninyo, uh, mga magulang, pwede nyo pong i-observe ito. Uh, nagkakaroon ng acne breakout, lagi masakit yung ulo, chronic pain, masakit katawan lagi, uh, palaging may sakit, no? kahit na wala namang, uh, wala namang talagang sakit. Pero minsan, we experience na nagmamanifest na yung mga symptoms ng COVID sa atin. Pero kahit na wala naman tayong COVID, minsan stress lang pala. Then, insomnia, hindi makatulog, uh, walang gana kumain, depression, rapid heartbeat, sweating. And there are actually a lot more signs and symptoms of stress. Okay? So, iba-iba siya. Yung iba, uh, na-experience pa magkaroon ng hair fall. Um, yung iba, irritable. 
nagiging agresibo. Okay? So, I'd like you to think about the causes of your stress and what are the possible reaction to stress. So, siguro sa inyo na lang po, no? sa mga isip ninyo, ano nga ba yung sources of stress ninyo and paano kayo nagre-react dito? Alright? And meron nga pong survey na ikinanda ka makailan lamang. And they found out na ang stress, depression, and anxiety ay uh, tumataas among Gen Z. So, sino po yung Gen Z? Ayan uh, po yung mga anak ninyo, no? And then, yung mga millennials, those who were born in 1980s, 85, ganyan, to 1990s, 1995, and then, those working from home. Okay? So, ngayong new normal na tinatawag natin ay uh, mas tumaas yung ating stress or mas uh, naging complicated yung ating mental health concerns. Alright? Bakit kaya? It's because of the loss that we experience. Okay? So, during this crisis, generally, karoon tayo ng sense of loss of the normal activities. So, during this crisis, a general sense of loss of the normal foundations of day-to-day -day activities may be experienced. So, not necessarily loss of loved ones, pero lahat tayo nawalan. Uh, say, for example, naapektuhan tayo lahat, di ba? Nasira yung ating mga plano, nawala yung uh, pagpunta natin sa mga kaibigan natin, pakikipag-usap natin, or sa parents po ninyo. And nawala yung regular na pagpunta ninyo sa palengke, or sa salon, sa barbershop. No, nawala lahat yon yung ating routine. So dahil dyan, naapektuhan yung ating mental health. And then, ano-ano nga ba yung mga losses natin during COVID-19? Loss of physical health, probably because of being infected by the virus or because of challenges in accessing health services to address other medical conditions such as chemotherapy and then dialysis. And then loss of psychosocial well-being by experiencing distress, fear, sadness, and anxiety because of uncertainty and unpredictability. And with that, it leads to another loss of sense of control, okay? Since everything is unknown, we never know what will happen in the future or in the following months to come. Hindi natin alam kailan ito patatapos, di ba? Wala tayong idea. So, nawalan tayo ng sense of control. And then, loss of social support. Hindi natin physically mapuntahan yung ating mga mahal sa buhay. Loss of loved ones who have died after contracting the virus or as a result of other circumstances during the crisis. And then, loss of spiritual comfort, di ba? Kasi um, yung faith groups natin ngayon or religious celebration are not being able to gather, di ba? Or... Uh, po pwedeng one is questioning his or her faith dahil sa mga nangyayari. And then, loss of routines due to isolation and lockdown measures, it prevents us from going to work. So, kaya nga meron tayong work from home ngayon and we are having this webinar kasi nga, hindi tayo makalabas. So, we are doing it remotely. And then, loss of liberty dahil restricted ang ating movement, we feel na nawala yung ating freedom to move. And then, loss of livelihood, siguro meron tayong, meron akong kausap ngayon dito na naapektuhan yung kanilang employment, yung business, uh, maaaring natanggal sa trabaho, or kaya naman naging three times a week or four times a week na lang yung, yung pasok sa trabaho. So, nakat yung main sources ng income natin. So, etong mga bagay na to ay nakapekto sa ating mental health ngayong COVID-19. At the most painful loss, most challenging loss is loss of loved ones. No? Pero hindi lang yun eh. Lahat tayo, we experience losses. So, we encounter multiple losses na walang tayo ng loved ones, ng livelihood, ng liberty, na wala yung routine natin, di ba? So, lahat, lahat, almost lahat ng losses na to na experience natin. That's why lahat tayo ay nagigrieve. Maaring hindi natin naiintindihan, no? I grieve pala yung nararamdaman ko. 
Pero hindi natin napapangalanan. Pero grief is a natural response to significant losses, such as the loss of loved ones or of things that are perceived as central to people's existence. So, some of the most common emotions experienced when grieving. So, maaaring sa inyo and maaaring sa mga anak po natin. Um, they experience shock, disbelief, denial, numbing, extreme sadness and despair, yearning, anger, resignation, and or acceptance. Grieving is a complicated process and it is, pro it is a process that takes time. It involves learning to accept the loss, learning to cope with negative emotions, learning to cope with the changes that are brought about by the loss, and then learning to go on with one's life. No, kaya nga, we believe na education must continue kasi pwedeng nasa grieving process tayo pero hindi pwedeng mahalt yung ating mga routine kasi baka it can do more harm than good. Uh, kasi sabi dito, kailangan we go on, we move forward with our life. Alright, while yung grieving is a normal uh, reaction to losses, meron tayong mga risk factors and protective factors. So when we say risk factors, so pag sinabing risk factors, ito yung mga bagay na posibleng magpalala or magpa-complicate ng sitwasyon, such as parental stress, substance use, and poverty. But the good news is, meron tayong protective factors na tinatawag. Um, by being resilient, no, yung parents, pag they nurture yung kanilang mga anak and merong knowledge of parenting and child development, kapag they provide concrete support in times of needed, social connections, social emotional competence of children. Okay, so these are protective factors that would help the children become resilient no? and to overcome yung current situation or crisis that we are facing. So how do adolescents react to crisis? Parents, manonotice din yun, no na yung mga anak natin, maaaring they experience difficulty with learning and concentration. And then, if you notice na nag isolate sila socially, keeping quiet in class, but now we don't have face-to-face -face class, keeping quiet in your house, withdrawn and not participating or hindi nakikipag-usap, there might be something wrong. And then, increased aggressiveness and challenging behavior. Uh, minsan, nakakasagot yung mga anak nyo na hindi maganda, nasisigawan kayo, irritable, uh, nervousness, sadness, and fears. Lack of confidence, courage, and hope for the future. And then, some other physical signs are fatigue, aches and pains, and stuttering. So, I'd like you to look at this pyramid. It says here that 70 to 80% of the children or the affected population of the crisis will be resilient provided that their psychosocial needs are met. So, only 20 to 25% of the affected population may need some additional support, such as uh, a person to talk about their feelings, help with a difficult situation at home, etc. And then, less than 5% lang yung nagre-require ng specialized intervention due to losses, trauma, or unresolved grief. So, in general, children cope better if they have a stable, calm adult around them. And that's you, parents, and of course, our teachers. Further, a child's sense of control over his or her environment and opportunities for involvement in tasks such as reading, drawing, or helping with chores at home will contribute to resilience and Coping. So, mahalaga na maituloy pa rin ang mga estudyante or ng mga bata yung kanilang mga daily routine or yung mga ginagawa nila sa araw-araw. And let us remind ourselves na yung itong mga reactions na to are normal to abnormal situation. Especially we are facing coronavirus pandemic. So, normal itong reaksyon na ipinapakita ng lahat. 
All right. So, parents, how to talk to your child during COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, when talking with students or with your child about a crisis, remember the following. Children want and need as much factual information as possible. Give simple answers to their questions, however, without scary details. It is important, parents, that you provide accurate information to your child or to your children. No? And where would you get that? For example, you want information about COVID. We have WHO, the DOH. And for example, ang kailangan niya naman ay information about returning to classes. Meron tayong DepEd, the body official page of your school, Cruz Naligas. And then, it is really helpful to provide factual information. No? Kasi uh, by providing accurate information, nariregain ng mga students or ng mga bata yung kanilang sense of safety. Another thing is to tell them it is okay to feel sad, afraid, confused, angry, and guilty. These are normal responses to a very abnormal crisis or tragedy. By assuring them that these reactions are normal means that you are validating their emotions. Third, emphasize that they are not responsible for the bad things that happen. No, they are not responsible for the COVID pandemic, but they can help prevent the spread of the virus no? by ayun nga, giving them accurate information. Uh, initiate group discussions sa bahay natin no? about distressing events that many may or may not have experienced. Kasi gusto ng mga estudyante o gusto ng mga bata na naririnig yung stories nila. And in that way, this will help affected children to feel na they are not alone. The, that they share their, the same sentiments, the same worry with you as your family members. And then, allow your child to share his or her own ideas about what happened so that he or she can begin to master the event. Okay? Uh, another thing, to listen carefully to your child's thoughts and fears without being judgmental. So, reminder, parent, no? It is important na nakikinig tayo sa ating mga anak. Um, do not ask your child to tell their own individual stories, no? Instead, you can let your child know that you are there for them and ready to listen anytime. Emphasize that everything possible is done to make sure the home is a safe space. Okay, hindi lang physically, of course, psychologically. Dapat ma-feel din ang bata na emotionally safe siya sa bahay. Emphasize that you care for your child's health and well-being. Now, as parents, paano natin ipopromote yung psychosocial well-being ng ating mga anak? Okay, first, ano bang need ng ating mga anak? So, I will be discussing the needs and some tips para makapag-provide tayo ng psychosocial support para sa ating mga anak. Pero itong mga tips na to isn't a one-size-fits-all. No? Kailangan kilala ninyo yung inyong mga anak. But generally, ito yung mga basic na kailangan ng mga anak natin or kailangan ng mga uh, kabataan ngayon. Of course, you have to secure attachment no? with caregivers. So, sino yung mga caregivers? These are the parents. You have to form a caring relationship with your child po. And then, establish stable and predictable routines at home to make students or your child feel pure, okay? And then, show love, care, and support to your children. Yun po yung number one. Another is meaningful peer relations and social competence. We have to teach the boundaries of socially accepted behavior and how to interact with adults and each other. So earlier, I mentioned uh, ano yung reaction ng mga kabataan sa pandemyang ito. No? Merong aggressive behavior. Pero we have to teach them ano ba yung socially acceptable behaviors. And then teach ways of conflict, resolution, and tolerance. Next is sense of identity and belongingness. So make sure that the child feels welcome and socially included in the home. No, that 
that child is being part of the family. And then promote a strong child identity, so feeling like a child or youth, and recognize as such, okay? And then engage child in dialogue, listening, and sharing information. Okay? You know, parents, yung mga anak natin, they feel bad if they're not being part of the dialogue and if hindi tayo nakikinig sa kanila. So, maaring nasasaktan sila doon and nakaka-apekto yun. Pero, um, they needed it the most ngayong panahon ng pandemya. So, sana wag nating ipagdamot sa kanila. And then, sense of self-worth and value, self-esteem. So, ito yung mga gagawin natin to help the child regain their sense of self-worth. No? Huwag tayong maging madamot, magbigay ng praise papuri sa ating mga anak, uh, such as very good, salamat anak, uh, nagugas ka ng plato, or kunwari may ginawang maganda sa eskwelahan, tumulong, tumulong sa kapitbahay. No? Pwedeng i-encourage pa natin yung good behavior na yun, no? And then create opportunities for self-expression through individual or group discussions. Pwedeng you encourage the child sa pagdodrawing, pagsusulat, drama, music, poetry, at iba't ibang activity na nagpo-promote ng pride and self-confidence. And then you encourage the child to form independent opinions. Okay? So pag may sinabi po yung ating anak, i-acknowledge po natin. Usually, yung mga parents, kapag yung anak nagsabi ng opinion, uh, minsan, akala natin, ano, uh, binabastos na tayo ng anak natin. No? Okay lang po na may uh, magsabi yung anak natin ng opinion as long as respectful pa rin naman. Pero, minsan, kahit na respectful naman yung pagkakasabi ng mga anak, um, yung parents, tinitake nila to personally and akala nila na nag uh, mamataas yung kanilang anak no or or binabastos na sila ng anak nila hindi po no mahalaga na marinig po natin yung anak natin na magkaroon sila ng independent opinions and then allow children to participate in decisions affecting their life and it is really important then that we involve our child or children sa paggawa ng decisions on house rules. No? Um, kapag na-involve po kasi yung mga bata sa mga decision making, mas they feel accountable sa mga rules na yun. So, the more likely na susundin nila yung mga rules na yun. Another is to trust in others. Make sure your child know they can rely on you for some help po and advice. And they can talk to you confidentially about their worries. Actually, yung mga kinatatakot po ngayon ng mga bata, di ba? Eh, hindi nagsasabi sa mga parents. May problema na pala, ang bigat. Pero uh, usually, yung mga kabataan ngayon, takot mag-open up sa kanilang parents. So, stand to your words and do not give false promises. Okay? So, ito po yung i-avoid natin. No? Huwag tayong magpa-promise kung hindi naman natin pala kayang tuparin sa mga anak natin. Alright, so ano pa yung need, psychosocial need nila is access to opportunities. No? We value each child's potential regardless of their gender, uh, their identity, their um, religion, their age, blah, 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 blah. So, lahat tayo, ngayon nga uh, new normal, ay uh, binibigyan ng pagkakataon ng makabalik sa eskwela. No? Kaya nga, ang uh, DepEd nagpo-provide rin ng ibang learning modalities. Hindi lamang online, no? meron po tayong modular. And then, make sure your child must have a chance to continue education. Ngayon, may pandemya. And then, intellectual and physical stimulation. Engage your students or your child in a recreational and creative activities, both traditional and new, through games, sports, etc. Okay? Uh, mahalaga po, mga parents, ngayon gusto-gusto ng mga bata yung mga video games, no? 
okay lang po yun. Mahalaga na makapaglaro po sila kasi form of stress relief din nila yun. Ano? Pero make sure na limited lang yung kanilang exposure sa gadgets. No? Kasi baka maka-apekto din sa kanilang mga mata. And then uh, you provide your children with opportunities for play and playful learning during the school days. Okay, or or non-school days po, no? So physical and psychological safety, how would we achieve that? Use space of positive discipline. Um do not use corporal punishment. So parents corporal punishment, ito po yung pananakit, no? Pamamalo sa ating mga anak, pamimingot, ayan, lahat tayo naka-experience niyan, no? Pero may uh, negative effects po 'yan sa mga bata. And any other kinds of punishments that ridicule or humiliate the child. So iwasan po natin na mapahiya yung bata kasi uh, makakaapekto po ito uh, sa kanilang psychological well-being, especially tayo ay nasa pandemya po. So, take prompt action if a student or if a child is exposed to cyberbullying and violence. And then, you teach your child po how to protect themselves from dangers in their environment. Uh, give accurate information. For example, how to stop coronavirus. Bakit kailangan magpatuloy ng edukasyon? Kahit na maraming nagsasabi, academic freeze, no vaccine, no classes. Okay? So, we have to emphasize na hindi naman mag-face-to-face -to -face class. Okay? And po pwedeng modular yung ating modality ng learning. Alright. So, next, psychological need ng ating mga bata, hopeful optimism about the future. Okay? You allow your child to express his or her hopes and aspirations about the future. And then, encourage your child to think of the future positively, but without invalidating the reality of the situation. So, kailangan maging positive tayo, but still grounded tayo sa totoong nangyayari. Okay? Hindi po pwedeng uh, positive lang, go on lang, no? Kailangan i-recognize natin kung ano ba yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon. Say, for example... We are under community quarantine and then ang hirap, ang hirap, ang bigat ng effects nito sa ating mental health and uh, maraming taong naapektuhan ng uh, pandemya na wala ng trabaho pero naniniwala tayo na darating yung araw in the future no, na matatapos itong pandemya na ito. Okay, so you see, you acknowledge na nasa community quarantine tayo, you acknowledge na nahihirapan tayo pero we are still positive about the future. Okay. Another psychosocial needs of our uh, children, of our students, ay uh, itong responsibility and empathy. Okay. Parents, you have to set example. Dem demonstrate empathy towards the needs, rights, and feelings of others. So, sabi nga nila, um, yung pagtuturo sa mga estudyante, ay uh, mas maigi kung tayo mga adults ang uh, nagiging model nila. And then, talk about different feelings and emotions with your child. Teach your child about their human rights and responsibility towards respecting the rights of others. Now, um, na-discuss natin yung mga psychosocial needs ng mga bata, ng mga anak natin. No? Now, Uh, I'll give some activities lang po siguro or tips para ma-improve natin yung learning and recovery ng mga bata. And even tayo din po, no? We have to play. Or itong mga batang to, we allow them to play. Okay? And then, journal writing or poetry and short stories writing. Po, pwede rin po yung painting, drawing, kasi itong mga ito, yung poetry, short stories, painting, drawing, is a form of self-expression. Okay? Na-express po nila yung kanilang ideas, emotions, and then religious education para maging intact po ulit yung faith. Life skills activities such as yung pagluluto, 
uh, paglilinis ng bahay na importante ngayon panahon ng pandemya. And also, um, we involve them in community service projects no? para ma-feel ng bata yung kanyang uh, responsibility sa sa community, no? ma-feel niya yung kanyang connectedness na hindi siya nahihiwalay sa komunidad na yun. Okay? And then, how about you parents? Of course, um, apektado rin naman kayo ng pandemyang ito. No? And uh, stressful din para sa mga parents na mayroong mga anak, mag-aaral, uh, new normal, yung iba uh, na mo problema para sa laptop. The following advice may be helpful. First is to accept your feelings because they are legitimate. Okay? At hindi ito signs ng personal weakness or lack of professionalism. And then you accept the situation you are in and adjust to the fact that there are things beyond your power to change. Okay po? Um, yung coronavirus, uh, beyond our capacity to change yan, no? It's beyond our control. So you focus on your locus of control. That means, uh, focus po tayo sa mga bagay na kaya nating kontrolin. For example, si COVID, hindi natin kayang makontrol. Pero kaya nating kontrolin kung papaano mahihinto itong chain of infection. Okay? And then, parents, you take it easy, know your limits, and do not place unreasonable demands on yourself. Alam ko, napaka-demanding maging parents, uh, ang daming gusto ng mga anak, di ba? Uh, paano pa kung may trabaho ka, tapos um, single parent ka, di ba? So, ang daming demands. O kaya naman, both parents walang trabaho dahil sa pandemya, Okay? So, do not place unreasonable demands on yourself. Recognize your reactions to stress and situations causing you stress. You may seek support po from your co colleagues, from your friends and relatives, and talk to someone about your needs, no emotions, doubts, and fears. Kung uh, financially nangangailangan tayo, so baka pwede tayo may mga lapita na ating mga kaibigan or relatives, then, maintain your daily routine as far as possible. And then, kung gumigising po kayo ng 6 a.m. noon, sana ngayon, ganun pa rin po, no? At ma-maintain po natin yung ating mga routine. And have sufficient sleep. Kasi importante to sleep and rest. And try to maintain a healthy diet. Importante to sa panahon na ngayon. Importante na may healthy tayong pangangatawan. No? Para malabanan natin yung uh, coronavirus in case na ma-infect tayo. Then, you allow yourself to laugh and then smile and maintain a sense of humor. Meron nga pong study na nagsasabi na ang sense of humor nakakatulong sa pag-cope. No? Socialize with colleagues, uh, friends, with your neighbors, friends, and fam family members. Of course, bawal yung face-to-face -face or kailangan physically distant. You can do it remotely. Uh, pwede po kayo mag-video call no? or tumawag po kayo sa mga kakilala ninyo. And then maintain a positive outlook on life. Appreciate your strengths and abilities. Recognize your daily achievements and try to look ahead for the future. Okay? So, kapag po yung mga na-mention natin kaninang reaction ng ating mga anak ng, uh, ng mga kabataan ngayon, feeling natin nahihirapan po tayo mga magulang no? na idil kung paano nga ba ang gagawin natin dito sa mga anak natin ngayong new normal and gusto natin silang tulungan. It's okay to ask for help. Okay? So, saan po kayo pupunta para humingi ng tulong? Of course, pwede nyo pong lapitan yung advisor. No? And then, sino pa si guidance teacher? Si Mrs. Marieta R. Santos from uh, Cruz Naligas High School. So, siya po yung pwedeng uh, tumulong sa atin sa parenting. Mahalaga po kasi na may knowledge si parent about uh, child development para matulungan yung bata. So, ang dami kong sinabi, pero I'd like to point out na isa lang naman talaga yung punto nito, no? Which is empathy. 
So, mga magulang, ang empathy po ay yung abilidad natin na ilagay yung ating sarili sa sitwasyon ng ibang tao. Uh, yung nafe-feel natin kung ano yung nafe-feel ng mga ibang taong ito. Okay? So, empathy is really the opposite of spiritual meanness. It's the capacity to understand that every war is both won and lost and that someone else's pain is as meaningful as your own. Okay? So, maaaring nasa isang gera tayo, maaaring nasa isang bangka tayo, pero iba-iba yung ating experience. Iba't iba yung ating pain, yung struggles na nafe-feel na yun. Pero it doesn't mean na mas painful yung sa kanya, mas maswerte ka, no? It's just that it's just that bawat painful experience ay uh, meaningful kagaya ng mga experience natin. All right? So, ngayong umaga, pinag-usapan po natin kung ano nga ba yung kalagayan po sa COVID, kung ilan na nga po ba yung number of cases, um, yung mga naka-recover. And then also, napag-usapan din po natin briefly yung waves ng pandemya at ano-ano nga ba yung epekto ng pandemya sa mental health ng mga kabataan at hindi lang ng mga kabataan maski rin sa atin pong mga magulang no pare-parehas naman po yung epekto nito sa atin and then uh, na stress tayo maraming mga nawala nawala ng mahal sa buhay nawalan ng uh, routine nawala yung sense of freedom pero towards the end of our discussion na pag-usapan naman po natin no kung paano po natin ma-ensure yung psychological well-being ng bawat isa ng inyong mga anak and then kung paano rin po mag-respond kayong mga magulang okay with that i'd like to end my presentation po by saying thank you to everyone who listened and to everyone who is present in this webinar especially sa atin pong mga magulang na nag-alat po ng oras para lang makasama ako dito ngayong umaga at sa atin pong mga guro ng uh, Cruz Naligas High School at gayon rin po sa ating uh, putihing principal. So I hope meron po kayong uh, nakuha sa aking ibinahagi at I hope na makatulong po ito sa pagbibigay din po natin ng tulong sa ating mga anak. Again, maraming salamat po at have a good day.